hi. Thought I'd pop on here early and let you see where we are today. I'm at school. I'm excited to be here. Had to water some plants that are left behind, just a few that we couldn't move, and get a couple things. So I thought I would read to you here, and Molly is here. <laughs> I miss this room too. I actually cried when I came in. I was like, oh, I miss this room and everything that we do here, all the learning that happens, but most of all, all the love and all the joy and all my little friends. I miss them, miss them, miss them. This is what we're gonna read today. This is called Amelia's Road. Um, we'll let you just look around for a second while a couple more people come in because I'm still kind of early. I'm loading up a cart of stuff to go home. So I'll be right back. Enjoy the room. Hello. Let's see. I see Molly. That means Eli and Zoe and Jasper are probably here. Anybody else in the room? It's Virginia. I'm at school. Hi. Say hello if you can. Sometimes you can't. Maybe you're holding the phone and your parents are making you a yummy snack. I don't know. Welcome to your school. Check it out. It looks amazing. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Hmm. Taking home some other books that I'm going to read on other days. This one is called I Live in the Universe. It's by Parent Child Press, which makes really great stuff. Oh, hi, Shauna. Look where I am. I'm at school. I'm kind of excited about it. I'm bringing home this book about Ramadan, so I have it at home. And I'm bringing home lots of books that we might share related to taking care of the earth because I can't believe it, but it's April. And so we've got saving energy. We'll look at it another day. Caring for nature. We all are, we do this every day, y'all. Hello, Shauna. Yeah, I know, right? I'm here. Reusing and recycling, saving water cleaning up litter. Hi, Kathleen. Hello, Autumn. Hello, Hazel, if you're awake. I was just showing them some things that I'm taking home to have at the home studio. Hi, Catherine. Hello, Charlotte and Olivia. Good morning in Florida. I'm here in our classroom and I'm getting some things that we need, um, that people need at home, that I need to mail to them. Watering our coffee plant that couldn't move, it's just too big, and our, um, our giant ficus tree and checking on things. Uh, because we do need to do that once in a while. And so, um, let me check the old clock on the wall. I miss looking at that clock, you guys. Because <laughs> when I'm in live mode, I can't see the time on my phone. Hi, um, all right. Well, I'm gonna get started. Um, I'm so happy to come to you from the classroom. It just gives me so much good energy from all the love and the learning that is in this room. And we'll be back in this room. So. I'm excited to be here. I won't be here long. I'm going to tape this and pack up my car and head home to send you more work from there. But in the meantime, let's hang out together. And this is kind of a long one. This Amelia's Road, you've heard it before if you've been in our classroom. Uh, we usually read it about once a year. And I've already read it this year, but I'm going to read it again. I think it's a really good perspective. Hi, Lori. Hi, Zella. Hi, Daphne. Good morning. I'm coming to you live from the classroom because I needed to come in and get some things. And this book really called to me. I didn't have it in my pile, but Amelia's Road is a story. Um, it's about one person, but it, it pertains to a lot of people that move around uh, for work and they don't have a permanent home. This child does not have a permanent home and we're gonna find out about that. And I thought, what an interesting perspective while we're all stuck at home and we're thinking, oh, I wish I could get out of my house. I'm so tired of being stuck at home. But we're really, 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 really lucky and blessed to have safe homes to be in. 
So that makes me think and feel grateful. Um, and also, I just, I love the story. I love the illustrations and we've had it for a long time. So the book is called Amelia's Road. It's written by Linda Jacobs Altman and the, um, the beautiful drawings are by Enrique Sanchez. And this used to be a Durham County Library book, but they discarded it, which I can't believe. So now it's here and it lives here. Amelia Luisa Martinez hated roads, straight roads, curved roads, dirt roads, paved roads, roads leading to all manner, manner of strange places and roads leading to nowhere at all. Amelia hated roads so much that she cried when her father took out the map. The roads Amelia knew went to, farmers where, went to farms where workers labored in sun-struck fields and lived in grim gray shanties. Los Caminos, the roads were long and cheerless. They never went where you wanted them to go. Hi, Luisa. Hello, Oz. So we're reading from Amelia's Road. This is a little girl that does not have a permanent home. Since we're all stuck at home, we're thinking about how grateful we are for that. Amelia wanted to go someplace where people didn't have to work so hard, move around so much, or live in labor camps. Her house would be white and tidy with blue shutters at the windows and a fine old shade tree growing in the yard. She would live there forever and never worry about Los Caminos again. What does Los Caminos mean? The roads. She doesn't like getting on the road, right? It was almost dark when their rusty old car pulled to a stop in front of cabin number 12 in the labor camp. Is this the same cabin we had last year? Amelia asked, but nobody remembered. It didn't seem to matter to the rest of the family. It mattered a lot to Amelia. From one year to the next, there was nothing to show Amelia had lived here, gone to school in the town, worked in the fields. Amelia wanted to settle down, to belong. Maybe someday, said her mother, but that someday never seemed to come. Family moves around a lot, don't they? Mama, Amelia said, where was I born? Mrs. Martinez paused for a moment and smiled. Where? Let me see. Must have been in Yuba City, because I remember we were picking peaches at the time. That's right, peaches, said Mr. Martinez, which means you were born in June. Amelia sighed. Other families remember days and dates. Hers remembered crops. Mr. Martinez marked all the important occasions of his life by the never-ending rhythms of the harvest. You can see her there with her mom and her dad. They mark their lives by where they're picking. The next day, everybody got up at dawn. From five to almost eight in the morning, Amelia and her family picked apples. Even though she still felt sleepy, Amelia had to be extra careful so she wouldn't bruise the fruit. By the time she'd finished her morning's work, Amelia's hands stung and her shoulders ached. She grabbed an apple and she hurried off to school. So for three hours from five, when it's still dark till 8 a.m., she's working with her family before school even starts, before she even does the hard work of school. Last year, Amelia spent six weeks at Fillmore Elementary School and not even the teacher had bothered to learn her name. This year, the teacher bothered. She welcomed all the new children to her classroom and she gave them name tags to wear. She wore a name tag herself. It said, Mrs. Ramos. Later, Mrs. Ramos asked the class to draw their dearest wishes. Share with us something that's really special to you. Amelia knew exactly what that would be. She drew a pretty white house with a gray big tree in the front yard. And when Amelia had finished, Mrs. Ramos showed her picture to the whole class. Then she pasted a bright red star on the top. By the end of the day, everybody knew Amelia's name and she found a place where she wanted to stay. Look at her picture. I love that white house with the blue shutters. It's so sweet. Amelia couldn't wait to tell her mother about the wonderful day. Feeling as bright as the sky, she decided to t look for a shortcut back to camp. And that's when she found it, the accidental road. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? And it's 
sorry, I'm in a mirror mode and it takes me a sec. Accidental road, you guys. Amelia called it the accidental road because it was narrow and rocky, more like a footpath that happened by accident than a road somebody built on purpose. She followed it over a grassy meadow, through a clump of bushes, and down a gentle hill. There, where the accidental road ended, stood a most wondrous tree. It was old beyond knowing, and quite the sturdiest, most permanent thing Amelia had ever seen. When she closed her eyes, she could even picture it there with her tidy white house. Amelia danced for joy, her black hair flying as she twirled around the silent meadow. It's a special tree on that special road that she found. Almost every day when work and school were over, Amelia would sit beneath the tree and pretend she'd come home. More than anything in the world, she wanted to belong to this place and she wanted it to belong to her. But the harvest was almost over and Amelia didn't know which, what she'd do when the time came for leaving. She asked everyone for advice, her sister Rosa, her parents, her brother Hector, her neighbors at camp, and Mrs. Ramos at school, but nobody could tell her what to do. The answer, when it came, was nearly as accidental as the road. Amelia found an old metal box that somebody had tossed into the trash. It was dented and rusty, but Amelia didn't care. That box was the answer to her problem. She set to work at once, filling it with Amelia things. First, she put in a hair ribbon her mother had made for her one Christmas. Next came the name tag Mrs. Ramos had given her. Then a photograph her whole family had taken at her last birthday. And after that, the picture she'd drawn in class with the bright red star on the top. Finally, she took out a sheet of paper and drew a map of the accidental road from the highway to the very old tree. In her best lettering, she wrote Amelia Road on the path. And she folded the map and she put it in her box. You can see all the special things that she's putting in there. Her Amelia things, her name tag, her hair ribbon the picture of her family, the map. When all the apples were finally picked, Amelia's family and the other workers had to get ready to move again. Amelia made one more trip down the accidental road, this time with her treasure box. She dug a hole near the old tree and gently placed the box inside and covered it over with dirt. When she set a rock on the top, oh, sorry, then she set a rock on the top so nobody would notice the freshly turned ground. When Amelia finished, she took a step back, looked at the tree. Finally, there was a place where she would belong, a place where she would come back to. She's gonna leave the box. I'll be back, she whispered, and then she turned away. Amelia skipped through the meadow, laughed at the sky, even turned cartwheels right in the middle of the accidental road. When she got back to camp, the rest of the family had already started packing the car. Amelia watched them for a moment, then took a deep breath and joined in to help. For the first time in her life, Amelia didn't cry when her father took out the map. She has some place that belongs to her and is gonna be there waiting for her and she feels that connection. You all are connected to your homes and we are so lucky to have those. It's got a little author's note at the end here that I wanna share with you guys. There's no picture, so I'll just read the words to you. Amelia Luisa Martinez and her family and thousands like them are often referred to as migrant farm workers. This is because they usually have to move from one harvest to another and they do not have stable homes. Many of the migrant workers come from different parts of the world, such as Mexico, South America, or the Caribbean. But many of them are American citizens born in the United States. Some of the male workers travel by themselves and return to their families after the harvest. Others travel with their families out of necessity, that means because they have to, even their children work in the fields. 
the constant work and moving about make it very difficult for the children to get to know a place or to make friends. In this story about Amelia, my hope is to show how one girl finds a favorite place. This is called Amelia's Road. I know that you have favorite places at your home. We are lucky to have a group of friends and a place where we stay. Um, I'm so fortunate for that. All right, prepare yourselves because now I'm gonna take you on a little tour. I wanna show you what's going on outside because there's some new things blooming. Hold on for this awkwardness because I've gotta take the phone. Da, 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 da. Out of there. Let's see if I can turn this. So you're walking with me on a tour. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let's make sure not to lock me out. I'm going to fix the door. Remember this old thing? Ah, I've got to switch hands. Not that ambidextrous. All right, that, and there's your cubbies. And there's your classroom. Bye, classroom. We'll be back as soon as we can. But look what's happening out here. There's a clematis that comes back year after year. It's a perennial. And it's a beautiful, beautiful purple. We've got a tomato cage here just to hold it up. Look at the buds. We are gonna get some more flowers here for sure. I'm, I'm gonna take this out of mirroring if I can. Do, do, do. That'll help me know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna take a look at this since we've been talking about flowers. You can see the Corolla on this one. The petals are really beautiful and there are lots of stamens here that are gonna hold the pollen. On the back, do we have a little calyx? Not really, you can't see it. Oh, it's telling me to rotate my phone. Hopefully you guys are still connected, that I'm still on Facebook. Looks like I am. Okay, so there's more purple going on out here. Um, you can see some purple wildflowers just in with the weeds and look at all this beautiful white puffy stuff I don't know what that is you probably know there's a one remaining tulip in a beautiful fuchsia um, there were others that bloomed but up higher let's see if I can get there can't walk and talk I guess <laughs> not with a camera at least there's another view you can see the clematis um, the bees are buzzing our pollinators are really happy because you've got lavender there, two types, a really dark lavender next to the um, rosemary, and then a lighter lavender. It's got lighter leaves and a lighter flower, and it's gonna smell amazing. And there's your rosemary doing just so great. Um, it's really beautiful. Oh, there's a bird up there. It's a robin in our river birch. So let's go in and take a look over here. Look at this planter box. Oh, more pollinators. It's just really going crazy and it's so happy. I'm happy to see all of this. Over here, first of all, there's clover, which is great for our bees. Um, we cut this way back. We even made some supports, Adele did, for our peas. This is, do you remember? Our grapes. These are the scuppernog leaves coming back. I was so encouraged when I saw all this stuff growing. This is all your new garden area, which is amazing. And look at the peas that you planted way back when it was still kind of cool. They're climbing, they're reaching, they have these little tendrils. I don't see any buds yet, but it won't be long, especially in this warm weather. And over here is one of the favorites of the playground. Look at these, you guys. This awesome red honeysuckle. More gardens, more gardens, more gardens. Okay, we're gonna go this way, you've got some blackberry flowers so we're gonna get some of those and you've got um, oh blackberries coming up in our box well you know they just go and go over here it looks like the butterfly bush has already bloomed and we missed it but you've got uh, Rosa Sharon here and this was also super encouraging I was so thrilled when I saw it this morning look at this you can't count it out. Fig is returning. We've got some great leaves on our fig. And so it's making its way down by the vans in the parking lot. We've got a blueberry that's coming back. And this is also really lovely and sweet when we're not here. Below that big ornamental pear, all around the airplane are tiny baby pear trees because the guys haven't been here to mow the lawn. They're just shooting up everywhere. Hello, little pear trees. 
Do you miss your friends? Look at that airplane. It's in like a pear forest. Hopefully we're still connected. Chicken Coop has no chickens. They're over at Miss Kirsten's. Here's your logs, your geodome, everything is here. And what's cool is the rain garden, as the plants grow, they soak up a lot of the water. So this works a little more efficiently. And you can see the grasses are coming back. Lots of new leaves here. There's your slide. The pansies are still going, but they are getting crowded out by some awesome weeds. Chick weeds. Oh, there's another tulip. One of your flowers we've been talking about. Over here. This didn't look too good before we left school, but look at it now. That is your chestnut. And over here, there's something amazing in the grass. I think it's a weed, but I like it. One man's weed is another man's awesome. Yep, stuff is happening out here, you guys. Look how green and gorgeous it is. I'm gonna walk you back up. Do, do, do. I know you miss it. It's pretty great. It's waiting for us. When we come back, we are gonna have so much fun. Hi, Clematis. Oh, there's even some little orangey flowers over there. Is this a hosta and a plant? I don't even remember planting. But hey, I'm going closer to that lavender because it's spectacular. Bo and Mary planted this for us. It needs a little weeding. But it's in there and it's going strong. Playground, I know you missed your friends. They'll be back soon. I'm going to head back in here. There we go. Here's your class. Here's the little wind chimes. It's a little bit messy, but it's waiting. Let me turn this around if I can. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, here I am. Well, guys, thanks for coming with me on that tour. Hopefully it wasn't too crazy. Um, I know you miss it. We all do. And I miss you. And so does Shauna and so does Adele. We'll talk to you really soon. And um, two o'clock today, Alex is reading live right here on the Facebook group, Poo. 2.30, um, I'll be catching up with my kindergarten friends on a Zoom call. And... Then I'll be posting more activities for you guys and a new bedtime story. So have a great day. The rain is over. Get out there and see what's growing around you. Bye, guys.